We all know Resident Evil, right? You know, tall vampire booba lady. But for the uninitiated, the Resident Evil franchise is a survival horror game series with more than 25 years in the field. It's an industry icon, and the first thing that comes to mind with the word zombie for many people. In these 25 years, the Resident Evil series has had enormous success, and with success come soulless adaptations. While I'm not going to talk about the shitty live-action movies, since they have nothing to do with anime, and this is an anime channel of course, there is a series of RE movies that enter my field. I'm talking about the CGI Resident Evil movies. With the new Resident Evil anime coming to Netflix, I thought it was the perfect time to talk about them. Yes, they are anime. They are Japanese productions, they are anime as fuck, and look, they're even registered in, in my anime list. So yes, these movies are anime. Since now that is out of the way, I'm going to give a simplified explanation of these CG movies. Not because they are over complex or anything, but because they are fucking goofy, and I honestly consider a full on explanation on them a waste of anyone's time. Consider it as a RE CGI movies for dummies. Okay? Cool. Now, first of all, we need to have our RE timeline, since these movies are canon, I think. I'm going to explain the series briefly. So pay attention. July 24th, 1998. The Spencer Mansion incident happens. That's the first game. Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield are the main protagonists of that story. A bunch of police officers encounter zombies in an old ass mansion and wacky stuff happens. Moving on, September 29th, 1998. The Raccoon City incident happens. That's the second game. Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield, Chris's sisters, are involved in the chaos of the zombie invasion in Raccoon City. More wacky shit happens that end with the destruction of Raccoon City. Resident Evil 3 is not important for the CGI movie, so let's move. 2004, Resident Evil 4 happens. Leon S. Kennedy, now an US special agent, goes to a remote village in Spain to rescue the president's daughter. And again, wacky shit happens. Now with a fucking death cult and a new version of the T-Virus called Las Plagas. Well. That's all the important things to know before watching the film, I think. Now that we are up to speed, let's start this shipwreck. Resident Evil The Generation is a CGI RE movie released in October 29, 2007. Directed by Makoto Kamiya, it is set in 2005, a year after RE4. The movie begins with the Raccoon City destruction, and fast forwards to the present. Umbrella dissolves, a lot of political shit happens, and a new pharmaceutical company rises. Will Pharma, basically Umbrella 2.0. We are at an airport with a lot of people outside rallying their disdain with Will Pharma. Claire Redfield appears, one of the main characters in RE2, and we know that she worked for an organization that goes against bioweapons called TerraSafe. Anyways, that doesn't matter, look, there is an infected in a plane. Senator Ron Davis comes to scene, an advisor of Will Pharma, and the personification of a political bad guy. He tries to escape the airport disguised as a civilian, but a protester with a zombie mask scares everyone around. A police officer tries to arrest another manifestant, but guess what? It is an actual zombie. <laughs> Where does it come from? Anyways, chaos starts to ensue and Claire babysits this random girl. And out of nowhere, a fucking 747 crashes into the terminal. <laughs> what the fuck? Falls the night and the airport is in quarantine. Leon comes as the special agent from the government to save the day. He's the main character from RE2 and RE4. Leon with a special team are on a mission to rescue the senator. They enter the airport through the roof, but they find themselves in trouble. Whatever, Leon saves the day like always. Claire is in a room with some survivors, but goes outside, I don't know why, and meets Leon in the hallway. Whatever, the survivors run in the main lobby trying to escape. One of the soldiers gets beaten, <laughs> and the senator pushes the little girl to make a way for his escape. Claire goes to save her, and Leon throws his gun to her like if she were in the fucking Matrix, and kills all the zombies. Claire is a walking babysitter, man. They accomplish to escape the airport with only one casualty. Some Wolf Pharma trucks come to the airport, and Leon is talking with the same agent from RE4. Her name is Hannigan. We have some talk about the vaccine, and we have a nice flashback of RE2. Suddenly, the trucks carrying the vaccine explode, and Leon deduces that it's a terrorist attack from Miller Curtis. Who? Claire goes with the head scientist of Will Pharma to his office, and Leon with the soldier. 
who incidentally is the sister of the terrorist, they find his house on fire. Head scientists explain to Claire the existence of the G-Virus, the same one from RE2. Claire sees the terrorist with the G-Virus and a bomb explodes in the building. Leon and Soldier come to Will Pharma to save Claire and to stop the terrorist. Soldier finds the sample empty and sees his brother rambling about the government. Whatever, he transforms into the same monster type that the one in RE2. It kills some soldiers that were around, but Leon stops him. An alarm starts for an out explosion in the whole building and the terrorist evolves into a brutal monster. The zombie terrorist gets stunned by Leon. The explosion happens with Leon and Soldier jumping into a pool. We have them kissing. Somewhere in the building, Claire fell dead. You're my new best friend! <laughs> the main hub falls in a defense tactic and the rest of the building will also do that. We have Leon jumping gaps and fighting the zombie terrorist, and we have this badass scene of Leon doing parkour. We have the zombie recognizing his human past with a family photo, and Leon saves Soldier from the fall, but the terrorist hangs onto the soldier. Leon is in the same fucking situation that in the game, but this time he will not lose his girl. <laughs> anyway, the scientist is dealing with someone about the vaccine, but Clary comes with Leon to stop him. How do they knew his location is beyond me? Police comes to arrest him, and now we have Leon explaining everything that happened in the movie. Like, I didn't watch it. To finish the film, we have Leon ditching another girl, like he always do. Come on, Leon, you just pulled that move two minutes ago. <laughs> and that's it. Pretty bad. Anyways, to the next one. Resident Evil Damnation is the second CGI Resident Evil movie. Directed by Camilla, the same guy as the first film, Damnation is set in 2011, two years after the events of Resident Evil 5. The film starts with a short history lesson about the USSR and the creation of the Eastern Slav Republic, a fictional country and the revolution that happens within the government and the opposition. Since this is a Resident Evil movie, we have bioweapons in the fight, with Leon participating in this war as part of the American side, with the help of Hannigan again. She tells Leon to abort the mission, but he says fuck off. He gets into a parking lot and after trying to save an undercover agent, he is attacked by a leaker. After some fight, he almost gets killed, but it's stopped by a mysterious man. Leon is captured by the resistance, and in the interrogation, Leon starts to spit in facts. Damn. It's the next day and we are in the War Council of the Eastern Slav Republic, or ESR as we call it. The president presents Ada Wong to the council, a support character from RE2 and RE4. She comes as a representative of the United Nations Bioterrorism Security Alliance, or UMTS as we call it. Leon is held captive and Ada is trying to sell bioweapons, aka zombies, to the government. If we check Ada's documents, we can clearly see that she's talking about Las Plagas, the parasite creatures from RE4. The ESR militarily raids the basement Leon is held captive. The old man transforms into a zombie and chaos begins. Leon takes the opportunity to escape. A zombie transforms into the classic Plagas from RE4. They go to the surface and we see how the infected people spread Las Plagas. <laughs> Damn, that's kinda hardcore. Leon goes to a church and incidentally is the revolution headquarters. The leader, Soldier, says that he purposely will get infected for controlling the leakers, since the last conduit died. Cringe Soldier asks Leon to help them, to prevent the leader's infection. The Soldier tells the leader's backstory and how he got in contact with the virus. Leon finds the empty virus case and gets reconciled with the love of his life, Ada. Anyways, Ada teases Leon, like always, and she escapes. <sighs> Life's a circus, and I'm the clown. Leon comes back to a now infested church and tells Cringe Soldier to get out. The military will bomb the place, but the soldier is infected. He gives his vest to Leon, but oh no. Cringe Soldier transforms and is put down by Leon. Leon demands the leader to give back Las Plagas, but the roof falls due to a bomb and he escapes. It's the next day and there's a zombie invasion at the presidential palace. The president interrogates Ada, knowing full well that she doesn't work for the UMTSA, and she frees herself with the same fucking move of RE4. 
We have some presidential kung fu, and when Ada tries to escape, the president seals the room and reveals that it's actually an elevator. Leon goes to the palace that is in the middle of an invasion and trespasses some liquors. It escapes her captive spot and Leon infiltrates to the underground facility. There's always a fucking underground facility. They meet again in an incubation spot for Las Plagas. They get ambushed by the ESR soldiers, but they escape with a blackout. I don't know how, since they were completely fucked, but Leon got the president as a hostage, though he doesn't realize that the president knows Kung Fu. That's a rookie mistake, Leon, come on. Leon escapes a barricade of bullets, making the soldiers a worse shooter than a fucking stormtrooper, and in the midst of the chaos, uh, the soldier gets invaded by some leakers, controlled by resistance leader. He attacks Leon, and he does some grappling shit to the leaker. <gasps> Indirecto Kisu! Anyways, Leon dunks on some nerd ass leakers, the president releases a tyrant, the same variant as Mr. X, but in this case there is more than one. A tyrant corners leader, but Leon saves him with an explosion. They escape through the elevator shaft. They get outside, but Mr. X as well, and after some liquor tyrant battle, Leon makes a gas tanker explode, which sets free the tyrant. Leon gets wrecked, but is saved by the leader. In the end, Leon uses a fucking tank to kill the tyrant, but it's not over. Two more tyrants come to action. Leon tries to 1v1 a tyrant with a fucking knife, but he gets absolutely destroyed by an airstrike from the US motherfucking A. The same goes with the other tyrant. The Russians invade the city. Leader is depressed now that he's infected, and Leon takes his gun and shoots him. Leon distrusts Hannigan about the involvement of the US with the bioweapons, and Ada deals with the remains of Las Plagas. In the end, we see Leader in a wheelchair. We all know that wheelchairs are the antidote for the virus, and with that, the movie ends. To the last one. Okay, last one. The Resident Evil Vendetta is the last of the CGI RE movies, and this one has a distinct tone to the other two. Directed by Takanori Tsujimoto, Resident Evil Vendetta is intended to be a more wacky, anime-like experience. It is meant to be a return of the silly narrative that the first game had, and boy, this movie gets goofy. <laughs> Released in May 27th, 2017, Vendetta is set in the year 2014 one year after the events of Resident Evil 6. Movie starts with Leon in a morgue, shooting at a beanbag, and Chris Redfield in a helicopter in a mission to rescue a missing person, in an abandoned mansion, one identical to the Spencer mansion by the way, the same one from Resident Evil 1. Chris is one of the main characters in RE1 and RE5. The soldiers explore the mansion until they find their first zombie. Chris shot to the infected soldiers, and confirmed that a kid they were looking for is infected. A torso zombie attacks some soldiers and the two fell in a trap. Kinda sick, not gonna lie. Chris escapes through the window, something that he should have done in the first game. He fights with the bad guy who sells bioweapons, like every fucking bad guy in this series. He leaves Chris with a swarm of zombies, but is saved by an attack helicopter. <laughs> we are now in the bad guy flashback wedding, which was suddenly stopped by a fucking airstrike. <laughs> This movie is bananas, man. <laughs> We're now at the present, in a lab in an university with Rebecca Chambers. Little Miss Basketball Star. She's discussing the T-Virus infection. Rebecca is a supportive character in everyone. The lab is under attack by one of the bad guys and infects everyone inside into a zombie. Except waifu Rebecca. She injects herself with a countermeasure, has trouble with zombies but is saved by Chris. Don't worry, she's okay. Chris discusses with Rebecca about Glen Arias, the bad guy, and how the samples are the same ones that Los Illuminados had, the bad guys from RE4. Chris says that they should discuss that with an expert, and in the way to meet him, Chris says this fucking line. Hey, I just realized DC and Damien aren't talking about Breaking Bad for once. Hey, don't go there, Chris. Yo, that shit's ahead of its time. It's a goddamn masterpiece. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> I guess Breaking Bad is canon in the Resident Evil lore. You sussy baka! Anyways, the pair meets with Leon to discuss about Las Plagas. Leon is tired of the same old routine of fighting bad guys and get ass rammed by the US government. Rebecca gives some reality checks, finds a dead body in the toilet and gets abducted. In the dining room, Leon confronts Steve Buscemi for adding his unit out. The guy says that Arias abducted his family in Spain 
and a fucking tyrant with a machine gun starts shooting the place, killing the poor wage minimum worker that's just doing her job. Chris sees Rebecca being abducted, and with Leon, decides to work together to save her. Arias abducts Rebecca to marry her. I see, a man of culture. Rebecca explains that the trigger virus that is needed for the infection is being distributed by water bottles that everyone drinks. Arias shoves Rebecca his late wife and says that he's going to marry her. The dude is fucking insane. We see that Arias' lackeys are his family members. We are now in New York in the middle of a bio attack and we have Chris and Cole getting into the city. Weirdly, we have now a scene with regular ass people walking the streets, like if there wasn't a terrorist attack or anything. <laughs> and Leon destroys a tank with a grenade. Some zombie dogs kill Breaking Bad number one fan, and Leon acts as a bait for the dogs. Arias injects Rebecca with a green substance, and the streets of New York are in chaos like usual. Also, one of the lackeys is defeated, and she has some cakes, bro. Chris arrives into the evil lair, and he starts to wreck some zombies in a very wacky and hypnotizing way. Also, Leon is here. Leon also does some gun fu, like his fucking John Wick. How many bullets are in that magazine, man? <laughs> also, Chris surplex in a zombie. This is big Resident Evil. Chris is confronted by Papa Tyrant, but is defeated easily by him. We now have the craziest gunfight in the history of anime. Like, this shit is ridiculous. <laughs> Just look at it. In the end, Chris wins by throwing Arias through the crystal roof. Miraculously, though, Arias is still alive. After falling like 50 stories, and Papa Tyrant DG evolves into the final boss. He comes up, but Leon saves Chris with the power of motorcycle. He gets yeeted though. After some fight, Leon is cornered, but is saved by a fucking railgun. Like, what is this movie anymore? The tyrant leaps into the aircraft and Leon does some crazy shit with his spike. In the end, the tyrant is killed by Chris. He saves Rebecca, disinfects the city with a miracle antidote. The trio soars to the horizon and live happily ever after. Thing. The Resident Evil CGI movies are probably the worst Resident Evil has been, but also the most pure form of it. Wacky zombie scenarios. I honestly don't recommend them to anyone. That's why I made this video, to prevent anyone from watching them. Um, there's a new RE show coming to Netflix. Uh, let's see how bad it is. But until next time, feel free to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment who should end with Leon. I'm Timeda. That's all for this video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.